So what's the driving question, Houston? The driving question is, how does water sculpt or change the earth? In this particular segment, we're going to talk about running water. Running water. How does running water? This is the, what you're familiar with in the world. And what we want to first talk about is how uh, the factors that affect infiltration. Remember, infiltration is the degree to which water is absorbed into the earth. And here are the five factors if you have the intensity and the duration of the rainfall. Those of us in Houston, we understand this, right? If it, if it rains for a long, long time, you're gonna get more runoff because it'll saturate the ground. So, how, and that's intensity is like how many inches per hour when, when we get the big storms, right? Also the amount of water in the soil. So if the water is saturated, you're gonna have a more likely chance that you're gonna get runoff because the water can't be absorbed by the earth, right? That's infiltration sort of by definition. The nature of the surface material. This is important. If it, is it a hard surface that doesn't allow it to infiltrate? Or is it a soil that tends to allow water to infiltrate? The slope of the land also, because water, of course, as it hits the slope, you know, you've got a mountain here, whatever, it's gonna run off and it may not have a chance to absorb into the ground because it's moving so fast down the hill. And then the type of vegetation makes a difference because certain plants obviously are gonna absorb more water. So the factors that affect infiltration, and let's just have a brief chat about what happens here in urban areas like here in Houston, is that in uh, urban areas, what you get is you get a lot more runoff than you get infiltration because what do we make things out of? Concrete and blacktop. And so, so much of our world is that we live in in, in, in a metropolitan area is, is this hard surfaces, which is nice, but then it creates more runoff, which can potentially create more floods. Now we'll talk about floods a little bit later, but that's kind of important to understand. Now, some important terms. One of the most important terms in understanding rivers is this concept of a drainage basin. Now, hello. A drainage basin is all of the water in a particular area. Okay, so we can see that this is a, a mountainous area, right? If you were to trace the river, it would go right that. That's the river, but if you're right, if, if a drop of water falls here, it's gonna come down here. And you can kind of see, this is the drainage basin. Actually, the drainage basin would be this whole area, including this hill, right, like that. Because all of the water, this is a basin, any drop of water here is gonna end up flowing down this Drainage basin, down this particular stream. So drainage basin is a very important concept. Drainage basins can be huge or a small valley like we're seeing pictured. All right. And the second term that we want to make sure we understand is this idea of divide. A divide is a sort of a gap where, you know, if one drop of water falls on one place, it's going to uh, flick somewhere else. I don't know if you can kind of see this, but you see these are rivers, right? This river is going here, and you can see kind of it's just sort of a pattern. We'll talk about these patterns later. But this one is going this way. See, this river is headed this way, and this river system over here is headed to the right. Okay, so it's the divide between the two. All right, so a drop of water that hits this side, it may be hard to see that there's a hill, but by seeing these streams, we can very quickly realize what direction or where the highest elevation is, because of course water flows downhill. This side goes to the left, and this side, or right, and this side goes to the left, and that's what uh, a divide looks like. So it's any, it could be also a ridge. Divides can be small or big. So hit drainage divide, a watershed, are separated by drainage divides or ridge lines. So we've got this ridge line. So again, a drop of water, boo, down this hill. Drop of water here, boo, down this hill. They go different streams. Now, divide can be small, like just between two ridge lines. And there's also things like called continental divides, where if a drop of water falls on one side of the continental divide, it falls through like Colorado and New Mexico in the United States. One side goes to the Mississippi River and, and ultimately to the Atlantic Ocean. And one drop would go to the other ocean, the Pacific Ocean. All right. There's four types of drainage basins, dendritic, radial, rectangular patterns, or trellis. You should jot those down. And let's take a, a, a quick snapshot of each of those. So the dendritic ones, actually like one we just saw, is these ones that look like, well, like dendrites. Dendrite is a, uh, like a tree, I guess. You could kind of see. It kind of looks like trees with leaves, this over here. And a classic example of this is the Amazon. Do you see how the Amazon looks dendritic, all these things? This is the Amazon basin or the Amazon uh, drainage basin right here, or the, sometimes also called the watershed, the Amazon watershed. That's the dendritic pattern. 
The second type of pattern is called a radial. Now this particularly happens in volcanoes. And you can see what they look like here. They start here and then they radiate out, hence the term radial, for some, from a center. And if you look at, uh, I don't know where this is actually at, Mount Tar Tarkini, but you can see the pattern here and here and here and here. By the way, the second one is an interesting one. It's a radial pattern that goes inward where you'd have a, a, a sinkhole, if you will, and they pattern this way. This is much more common, the one on the left here, but this is the one we'll mostly focus on. But it's interesting to see that you can have both a radial in and a radial out. Radial out, much more common. The third type is the rectangular part. Now this is weird, right? Why does this happen, that you get this, these weird sort of rectangles? This isn't like perfect rectangles, but relatively 90 degree angles. What you've got is you've got sort of weak rock, and it's going through like the crevasses and the cracks. So this is up in Pennsylvania, up here in uh, the U.S., and it has to do with the nature of the rocks and the foldings of the rocks in this particular region. If you look at these mountains, they're, you know, they're like this. And so the, the, they come through these ridges. So this has been a place where there's been deep folding in the earth and probably some strong metamorphism uh, of the rocks. Now the trellis is a weird one, is that it's, it's sort of rectangular and also, but also has these little, I don't know, uh, sticky things that come out, right? So, it, and it's, this is the trellis. And it's, what happens is that you've got ridges of resistant rock, right? So the ridges are made of something strong, likely an igneous or a metamorphic rock. And the valleys are a less resistant rock. So the valleys have been cut by the water. The water cuts, right? It, it shapes the earth, sculpting the earth. And this is the trellis pattern. Sketch that, I think, would be helpful. Uh, so this is the trellis uh, pattern. So sketch that, and you'll know what to do. So, hey, Houston, we got no problems. Next up, we're going to talk about how streams flow. We'll see you in class.